Welcome to more cool tricks and hidden features. To start us off, we have a crazy interaction with Relic Dagger's glyph, Eldritch Dagger. Apparently after using a relic with this glyph, you gain the ability to see invis characters around you. Now I'm not really sure why this is a thing since it's not listed in the description, but it's here, at least for the time being. Next we have a neat interaction with Afro's ult. If you're quick enough with it, you can actually ult multiple allies at once. You just need to switch targets with your kiss while the ult is going off. Do note though that the ult will only stay on the tethered ally, so when you switch off your first ally, it will end the ult on them. I bet you didn't know this one, but Mom and Dash can actually go through walls. Well, maybe you didn't know it, since it's in the description. I actually overlooked this and I feel like a lot of other people have as well, so I thought I'd add this one in here, mostly as another reason to nerf her. Next up we have a few cool tricks with the trickster herself, Daji. Firstly, you can cancel her dash if you jump right before she teleports to you. This also puts her dash on cooldown. You can also teleport behind someone if you face the opposite direction while you're teleporting. Lastly, while Daji is using her second ability, she gains damage mitigation from behind. The description is a bit misleading on this, but anything that hits her from behind gets mitigated by 40%. What's even cooler is that anything in an AoE also counts. So for example, if you get hit by Silol while she's 2-ing, the damage will be reduced by 40%, versus if she wasn't 2-ing. Here's a quick little tip. Try not to Kepri ult anyone that has timeline up, because the timeline will always proc before the Kepri ult, essentially wasting his ult. Here's a weird interaction with a Wheelix and Feather Step. Feather Step doesn't apply damage to anyone who's invisible. You typically can't even get it off when they go invis, but on the slim chance you do, it'll do zero damage even though it does the full animation. Here's a crazy bug I found with Mulan. Mulan 2 is immune to slow immunity effects. I've had this happen to me a couple times in ranked, and I located the source to be Mulan. Karen is supposed to be slow immune in his 3, but Mulan's 2 still slows him. What's even crazier is this works with Atlas Dash 2. Everyone knows that Atlas Dash is slow immune, and it even cleanses slows. Well, Mulan 2 bypasses this as well, slowing Atlas. However, this only occurs before you start the dash up. If she hits you while you're dashing, then the slow is still cleansed. And since we're on this topic, Stone of Binding can be procced by any form of CC, whether it's hard CC or soft CC, and yes, this does include slows. But what's weird is Mulan's slow on her 2 doesn't proc Stone of Binding either. It turns out Fafnir can proc Perduin twice with a single ult. He procs Perduin when he transforms into a dragon, since his transform lasts 60 seconds and Perduin's cooldown is 45 seconds, whenever Fafnir detransforms, he procs Perduin again, effectively procking it twice with a single ult. Here we have a neat interaction with Cleo and Charon. In my other cool tricks video, I showed Charon 2 being able to reveal invis targets. Well, this takes it a step further and you can actually see where Cleo is in the wall with his 2 on her. Since we're on the topic, another interaction with Cleo that I feel a lot of people don't know about is that you can actually tell if she's in a wall next to you. If you look at your status bar and you see the symbol pop up, this means that Cleo is in your closest wall. So make sure to look for that when going against the Cleo. Another cool trick is that there are three characters that can hit towers outside the tower line. These characters are Tsukiyomi with his ranged autos, Isha with her passive auto, and X-Ball autos while he's ulting because he gets extended range on them. Here's a cool interaction with Haim and Naja if you're not on the receiving end of it. If you get ulted simultaneously, you'll go both through Niflheim and Naja ult at the same time. Here's a weird interaction. For no reason at all, Athena can actually dash through silences. She can start her dash while being silenced, but silences don't cancel her dash like they would any other character. Another cool hidden feature is that Guan has the only cripple immune dash in spite, at least as far as I know. He can't start his dash while being crippled, but just like Athena going through silences, his dash won't get cancelled by cripples either. A weird thing I found in Conquest is that if you hit a jungle camp with an auto exactly when it spawns, the jungle minion will insta-die. I've done this multiple times, so it must just be a bug in its code. Whatever you do, don't kill a jungle camp going through Yana's portal, because it'll leave this dimension and only come back 2 minutes later halfway under the map. Next up we have some interactions with Fenrir Brutalize. Fen typically can brutalize enemies that use a jump or are in the air, but there are a few interactions in which you can, Yemoji Hoop being one of them. This one's weird because taking her hoop doesn't allow you to go through walls, but a Wilkes can pull you out of it, and on top of that, Fenrir can continuously brutalize you through it. Fenrir can also brutalize through Lance Jump even though it's an iframe. Now here's something that's not in the description. Frenzy's upgrade, Belt of Insatiable Hunger, also refreshes on jungle boss kills, such as Gold Fury and Fire Giant, not just off killing enemy characters. This is a really strange bug, but if Fafnir jumps into Yemoja Hoop in Dragon Form in the right way, he's literally locked up for like 10 seconds and can't use abilities, relics, and he can't even move. Alright everyone, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed this and haven't checked out my other cool tips and hidden tricks videos, I'll have them posted in the description below. Till next time, see ya!